Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his good friend, Lumberjack Landlord. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome. Just doing everything I can to not get you banned on YouTube. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we'll be all right, I promise. <laughs> Perfect. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about um, is a financial metric mm -hmm. that no one else talks about, which okay. is sad. Okay. I believe it's actually the only important financial metric if anyone, anyone, underline, bold, wants to improve their financial situation. If you yeah. want to go from broke to something, you want to go from something to more, you want to go from more to a lot, there's only one thing you need to worry about. And it's not income and it's not net worth. I think both of those are easy to flex, fake, and lie about. There is a third metric that is so easy. And the beauty is you can't fake it because everybody can see it. If you're financially stressed, this number sucks. If you are not happy financially, this number sucks. Mm -hmm. Without further ado, this number is called disposable income. In my course, Get Money Right, of course, I call it freedom dollars because I just want to be different. But let's talk about disposable income, why it's the only number that matters, why nobody else talks about it. And then we will roll into how do you increase it? Because the beauty of disposable income is you can do two things. And most of you should do two things. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about it first. What do you think? <laughs> At risk of melting snowflakes across the world. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to work harder. Yeah. I mean, you know, one of the things is I think a lot of people. So, yes, I'm a landlord. Um, I have a high tech job. I have a ton of employees um, and that work for me there. And then I have the employees that work for me uh, on the landlord side. Mm -hmm. What I can tell you is this, my talented people have never had to ask me for a raise. They don't because they're valuable to me. You want to make more money. You want to have more disposable income. Be more valuable. <laughs> I, I love how you did that. Yes. More valuable. You got to be more valuable. What more am I getting from you? I've already got some, I got a ton of people that can show up and do the job 40 hours a week. I got it. Not a problem. Be more valuable, be proactive on something, you know, something along those lines, you know what it is. You're my eyes and ears doing the job that you're supposed to be doing. Why can you, why, why, when I've been asking you questions for quite some time, do you not start to anticipate those things? And then in my eyes, it goes, this person's listening. This person wants more. Mm -hmm. This person's willing to do more. Guess what? Those guys get raises. Those girls get raises every single time, yeah. without a doubt. And when there's a smaller pie, people, other people get nothing and they get more. That's how it goes. Yeah, there's a couple of things we just need to talk about here. Because again, as I said in my, I have a playlist called Whiteboard. Probably the most important video mm -hmm. there is my 2022 and 2023 uh, economic review. Because I think in the short term, the labor market gets tighter, meaning unemployment. I think in that video, I talked about going all the way down to 3.2%. It's at 3.6 now. So mm -hmm. in the short term, it's going to get tighter. It is. But by the end of next year, Unemployment, and I think in that video, I talked about being over six or over six and a half percent. Yep. The reason this is important is a lot of people today, because you have all the power today, you can quit jobs and bounce around mm -hmm. and, you'll, and you'll make more money. As unemployment doubles, or heaven forbid, it gets really bad and it triples. Mm -hmm. Some of you will be wondering and telling yourself, why did I get laid off? Mm -hmm. Now, some of you will be in parts of organizations that they cut entirely. So it doesn't matter how good you are. Yep. Some of you are just not going to be valuable, right? You are, we're going to be bodies that didn't add value or the value exchange was weak. If you want to be that person that's last on the list, which again, none of you are thinking about today. None of you, no snowflake is thinking about today, but you'll think about it in 18 months. When yep. you're like, oh my God, I lost my job. Now, what do I do? So my advice for you is to improve your skills. B, get closer to revenue, right? right? The closer you are to revenue, the last you'll be cut. And if you create revenue, then you ain't going anywhere unless the business goes. Um, so again, there's a lot of things you could do to, 
fixed disposable income. So that's only one thing, right? To get more valuable. The other thing you've taught me, and it's your quote, is it's never been a better time to monetize your, I don't know, hobbies, interests, and passions, something like Gives that. Gives talents and abilities. You nailed it. Yep. Very close. So again, that's something else all of you should think about. You don't create a side hustle when everyone else is trying to do it. You create it right. in the good time so you can build and have something to rely on in a year. If you right. want to do old Ford Mustangs or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or watercolors or whatever it is, now's the time. Yeah. to start building that following in interest, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, I've got uh, the photographer crew that I use. Guess what? They all do it for a living. And guess what? They don't work Saturdays, but they work Saturdays for me. Hmm. They're, they, it's their equipment. They have it, their contract. They say, yeah, like this is what the company pays me. And I need that 40 hours a week and that's good. But they're working Saturdays. Same thing. I had a couple of electricians that were finishing up and trying to get their journeyman's license. Cause once you get the journeyman's, you can basically be left alone on the job. You just can't pull the permit in our state. Mm. And so I said to them, I said, I'll give you eight hours a week. You pick the time, two nights, a Saturday, a Sunday, whatever. And I will fill stuff in that time. I get a deal because they have a license. I can do it for 50 bucks and it's 50 bucks an hour. And it's usually just quick fixes. But they now have income. If they do that eight hours, it's 400 bucks times four is $1,600. And they just got to give up a day or a couple nights a week. So there are absolutely the opportunities for people to do things that are already in their frame of work that can then be better, do differently, whatever. Um, there's just so much there. And, but you're going to, you're at the work. Like, admittedly, I, somebody posted something this week on a YouTube video and I absolutely let them have it <laughs> because they were whining. They were fussy. They were like, Oh, well, we made a hundred thousand dollars on our house. We just sold. Now we can't find anything. You didn't do the homework before. Like, yeah. Fault. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, well, you know, my wife and I combined, we make well into this, you know, we make, you know, well over a hundred thousand dollars, but we still can't find anything we afford. Dude figure out a strategy. Like maybe you can't live where you want to live like this. You got to do the work. And that's where I'll give. And like you give, we will give time, which is our most valuable asset. We will give time to helping people accomplish the task, but no whiners. It's, it's about understanding and reprogramming and saying, I want to do and accomplish X. I need to get to X. And so what is the path by which I get to X? Here's how I tell you, you don't get there. You have to know your market, period, end of story, stop. You have to understand your finances, period, end of story, stop. You then take those two things and eventually it will meet opportunity. I know people that have been looking for 18 months and they haven't found a deal that makes sense for them yet, but they're like, I'm starting to see things trending the other direction. They're going to win eventually. They're going to win eventually. And when they do, that is going to be a sweet, sweet victory like they have never tasted before. And that's just the first sol solid step in the next part of the journey. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. The beauty of disposable income is not only can you do the revenue side or the top line or the income side, there's this nasty thing that comes with the rat race called expenses, lifestyle creep, all mm -hmm. of those things. I went from making under 20 grand a year to making over a hundred grand a year in a six year period of my life. And I still had nothing to spend. Mm -hmm. It was all gone. It didn't matter. I suffered. I was an idiot. I was stupid. I could have been retired a decade earlier if I didn't let this happen, but I did. So if you wanted to have more disposable income, the fastest thing to do is house hack, right? That is the largest four, three, two, one, whatever it is, roommates, whatever it is. But mm -hmm. lots of you have needs and wants. Take care of the needs. Cut out the wants for a while, and you'd be amazed at how close you impact or how fast you impact disposable income. So talk about house hacking first, and let's go to the others. Yeah, I think people were real. That, that person was really offended that I was offended by them. <laughs> I find it offensive. If you're not willing to do the work and you're just there to post and whine, pass. Like, people here do the work. That's, that's what we're here for. We do the work here. So the cheat code to wealth is four, three, two, one strategy, which is you buy your very first fourplex 
as an owner occupied with the three and a half or 5% loans that are available to you. And then after a year being there, you, and what's better about that is those three rents, they'll actually give you between 75 and 85% of the value of those three rents towards your income, towards the mortgage. Four, you do that four, then you literally, you leave that when you can refinance out of it, depending on what that market looks like, but you can then go into a three because what the government looks like with those government backed loans is they don't want to see that you're becoming a building baron on their dime. So mm-hmm. that's why the four, three, two, one strategy of going from four to three to two to one, you'll have to write justification letters and why you're moving and all this other stuff. And you should probably have something that's truthful, but coherent. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to move into a different school district. We need more space. We want a yard. We want this. We want that, blah, blah, blah. Most of those reasons will, a combination of those reasons will pass. But that four, three, two, one strategy, there's some markets that don't have four units or a four unit is $2.5 million. I get it. I get it. So you can pick up anywhere there. I actually did, after I got out of my threes, I didn't even start with a four. Sorry, a little lumberjack. But after I got out of my threes, I literally, after a three, I went into duplex, 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 single family. Mm. And those five duplexes were all in the same city. So I had to write that letter to the mortgage broker every single time and sometimes change banks. Some banks gave me a super hard time. Others were like, yeah, we don't care. Hmm. Okay, sounds good. So I did five, after the try, I did five duplexes in a row and then finally went single family. So if duplexes is all your market has, then be looking at those duplexes because you can bounce multi to multi, two to two to two to two to two. You can do that. It was available at that time. And that was at a time where they had downsized us down to only four mortgages. Mm. So I had to go, I had to go different type of lending on the last one um, because I didn't have any Fannie Freddie loans left. Wow. Yeah. Again, so when you think about, again, disposable income, you can fix the revenue side, make more, be more valuable, get a side hustle. You can lower expenses. Attack for most of us, our biggest expense is the housing payment or or rent, house mm-hmm. hacking. But you got all these other expenses: gas, mm-hmm. uh, entertainment, food. The big thing for us was eating out. We would eat. We were eating out nearly every day. We didn't do that. I mean, there's just all, all these other choices. When you really have an honest review of your budget, which you helped me create in the Get Your Money Right course, it's a. It's most of you have no idea what you spend in a month. Agreed. It's shocking. And again, I say this as somebody who's done it multiple times. And um, if you want to fix the most important metric, disposable income, make more, spend less. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. Yeah. I mean, these are universal lessons, you know, supply and demand on pretty much everything that's out there, whether it's housing, whether it's lumber material, whatever, supply and demand. Mm-hmm. And in this particular case, it's very much needs versus wants, like you talk about it. You can cut back. I know I've seen people do it. And usually it's not cutting back by like 10%. It's usually 50%, 40, 50. I've seen people literally say, I want a lifestyle where I can live on 20% of my take-home income. Wow. And I've seen people do it. And it, and is it very different? It is. They don't typically bump up to the, to the bigger house. Mm -hmm. They make do with what they have. But you know what? Those are people that right now they watch the news and they just giggle because mm-hmm. it just doesn't matter. They're like, it just doesn't matter. We lived our lives for 30 years this way. And so now it just doesn't matter. We can, we'll be able to weather whatever storm and there's nothing. It's not that money makes you happy, but certainly having the money to pay the bills certainly reduces your stress. That was my big takeaway from this, the late seventies, having, you know, going back and revisiting, talking to my mom about the late seventies. It was the reason the family was stressed out and it was horrible and it was yucky. And it was never an experience I wanted to have again was because there was no disposable income. Mm -hmm. It was negative most of the time. And the few times it was positive. I mean, we were, I mean, we would look for loose change Mm -hmm. to go buy groceries. Yep. That's a horrible feeling. Yep. We had penny jars in the basement. And it was like, we would save change from other things that were done and we would save the change, save the change. And then eventually we'd have enough money in the, in the glass bottle to, you know, be able to afford a pizza if we picked it up Mm. that, I mean, that was just, and that was our treat. 
Yeah, it's it's some something, and the the issue is is that I think then far more people were able to live that way. I think that much of society has no idea. They just will just literally things will just getting start start getting shut off because they have no idea how to manage properly their you know their their finances. Sadly, yeah. And so again, folks. Recessions, bear markets are not to be, uh, they all suck. Let's just say that up front. Mm-hmm. But they, if you prepare for them, you get yes. some dry powder, you uh, start cutting back. They actually are great times to build wealth, right? You can secure yes. assets and toys at discounts. Yep. And I see that time coming. I think, uh, I think it certainly starts next year. Uh, but again, disposable income. It's all about, it's not about your income. It's not about your net worth. I believe if you want to have, you want to have a better financial future, understand your disposable income, double, triple, quadruple, 10X your disposable income, and you will be on your way to a happy life. What do you think? I completely agree. This is why I think my son Samuel's seventh word was cash flow. I love that. We talk, we literally, when we drive in through neighborhoods, we drive through neighborhoods, we point to houses and he says, I think we should buy that one. I said, okay, why should we buy that one? He said, so we can fix it up and rent it out because he can see when a house doesn't look nice. And he says, I think we should buy that one. So, okay, why? We should buy that one and fix it up. Okay, why? Because then we can rent it out to a nice family. I said, mm-hmm. okay, but what for? He says, for cash flow. <laughs> that's it. Like, that is what I want my kids learning from a business perspective. That's what I want my kids learning and understanding is they need to be able to identify value assets. They need to be able to understand what we do and then why we do it. And then they need to understand what the last thing must exist for us to do this thing. It has to cash flow. It has to cash flow. And too many people have too many things out there that are your car is not an is not a is not an asset. It's a liability. Mm-hmm. It's a liability because it's only going to cost you money. It's only going to go down in value. And those of you who got lucky and bought a car two years ago and tell me the story about how you just sold it for two thousand more than what you paid for it. Congratulations to the first time that happened in history. Exactly. You got lucky. Let, let yeah, me know yeah. where let me know where it is in 2 years. Yeah, the Fed broke lots of things including used cars. <laughs> yeah, nothing like 40% more cash in the system and that's why those types of assets went through the roof. It is. But over the next couple of years, largely that's going to disappear. Yeah, totally agree. Do me a favor, where can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and on Instagram and then we have our live stream 11:30 a.m. Eastern time on Sundays. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm.